Good morning once again. My name is Joy Muchache. Welcome back to the Why in the Morning show. You are watching The Health on Monday show. My name is Joy Muchache once again. You can find me on Joy underscore Muchache. And remember, if you want to interact with us, you can do so on our social media handles that are right there at the bottom of the screen. And all you have to do is put the hashtag Why in the Morning and hashtag Health on Monday. And please, you guys, I'd like you guys to welcome a very special lady. We've been interacting. She seems pretty cool. Her name is Dr. Anwen Johi, and she's here to tell us a little bit about contraceptives and sex and how it's affecting our youth today. And um, actually, she's going to be telling us a little bit about her practice just before we start this discussion and where she's practicing at, and then we'll start this discussion. Karibu Nisana, and welcome in joining me, Dr. Anwen Johi. Thank you so much, Welcome Joy. Doc. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, where are you practicing at? Yeah. My name is uh, Dr. Anjohi, as you have said. Um, I was working at PCA Kikuyu Hospital as a medical officer intern. Currently, I'm a medical officer, and uh, I'm also uh, involved in advocacy for the youth um, throughout my internship, throughout my um, undergrad. Mm -hmm. um, I was involved in. Um, Respect. It's a program for uh, educating the teenagers on reproductive health and sexual health. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. oh so that's quite fitting for today's. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. Interesting. Really is. Yeah. How really did that is. experience go? Um, it was just. Uh, it it's a program that was started by Medical uh, School Association of Kenya. So most medical schools in Kenya, if you were interested in advocating for the youth and advocating for their reproductive health and sexual health, you could join. So that it just it was something that I cared about and I joined it. I yeah. see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Well, that's quite fitting because today we're talking about um, well, not really reproduct um, things to do with reproduction, but we're talking about contraceptives. Yeah. And of course, if we're going to be discussing contraceptives. We can't uh, do that without discussing the connection to sex because mm -hmm. they are connected ultimately. Yeah, sure. yeah. and so the reason why we've I decided to discuss this topic today is actually, uh, first and foremost, this is something that a lot of people need in their lives in order to plan their families, in order to keep things in such a way that the, um, the, their income at home can be controlled and also that the children at home cannot go out of number. And that's exactly how contraception actually came into the picture. Contraception actually was first created for that purpose, for the sake of helping families out and trying to curb you know, the overgrowing uh, of families and other methods that we're going to be talking about today that people are trying to use in order to curb um, unwanted pregnancies and things like that, and unplanned pregnancies. But for today, we want to talk a little bit about more controversial things, but just for a second. But right now, we want to talk about the most important and the most basic contraceptives that people not normally tend to use. And some of those, um, actually, some of those are things like the oral contraception, which you all know, which ladies take every single morning. <clears throat> we also have the female condom and the male condom. And these are also used by people on a daily basis and uh, also the IUD which doctor is going to tell us why it's not so common but that's also one of them and we also have the coitus interruptus um, which many people know well it's when you when a male decides to pull out and also spermicide which is actually um, an ointment that you apply in order to reduce um, the reproductive cells of sperms and there's so many the list goes on and on and on Daktari, mm -hmm. we can't find here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yes. And those ones are the vagina, well, not find here, but mm -hmm. maybe They're you can, so but it's so difficult. Yeah. So that's the vaginal ring, the diaphragm, and the patch. Yeah. Can we talk about why they're so difficult to find? And then we'll focus more about um, the ones people have chosen to use. Okay. Um, so the diaphragm, uh, the vaginal ring, the patch, they, uh, some of them have hormones in the, inside them, okay. but the reason, the reason why it's f uh, difficult to find them here in Kenya is usually because of the price, the price tag um, that okay. are associated with them. Uh -huh. And then remember we are living in a country where there are people who are doing well financially, there are people who are not, okay? And we have to cater, in terms of health, we have to cater for all groups, whether you're doing well and whether you're not doing well. So usually the people who are not doing well or people who are young, the places that they will go to are government facilities or mission-based facilities. And this 
facilities might not have this uh, diaphragms, vaginal rings, and usually it's because of the price tag. So um, the government facilities offer specific types. So they okay. will offer condoms, they will right. offer pills, right. and they will offer them usually free. So obviously someone who does not have the means, especially the young people, or someone who does not have that money, yeah. they will end up going to the government facilities and using this rather than using the diaphragms, the patches, etc. But see. they are they are there. They are there. Yeah. They yeah. are there. They are, but like in high end facilities. Uh, high yeah, that's and at a high cost as well. Yes, and at a high cost. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that's not very useful to our it's, population. It's right not now really because useful to our population is very skewed towards um most of the people tend to be under the actually under the <laughs> wow, under the poverty line, yes, literally. Sure. Most yeah, of our population, sure. over fifty percent of our population, is under the poverty under line. Under the poverty so line. So these yeah. these particular ones are not going to cater to them. True, true. Very What's true. What's the point of even bringing them into the market? Why uh, can't we focus on you know bringing all types and all sorts of the free ones? You know, mm -hmm. and right now I know that in offices. Um, Actually, most offices, mm -hmm. uh, they tend to keep condoms in the toilets, in the yes. bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Those are free. Yes. And that's excellent, yes. of, course, of course. Because yeah. uh, some people just don't want to spend that money. True, true. And then because you don't spend that little money, you mm -hmm. end up risking your whole entire life. Yes. So that is excellent. Yes. Yeah. But then why, why would they, um, I don't know, maybe... Do you have an idea as to why? What's the point of providing these high-end ones mm -hmm. when we have such a high population of people under the poverty line? Okay, what I can say, and th this is a part that uh, not many people say that the government has really tried uh, in terms of reproductive health and I, I, I say this because um, the people the government tries to reach people all the way Hadi uh, Mashinani let's call it yes, that yes, yes. so uh, for the small health facilities they will mostly just um, they will provide what is the the basics so the basics are the condoms the basics are the pills uh, it's not it's not for everyone but usually it's there Yes, so the high end ones, the high end, the diaphragms, the patches, they're usually provided by the private facilities. Mm -hmm. Yes, so if you want them, if that is, that is what you're interested in, you go to the private facilities, but the government really does not offer this. I yes. see. Yeah. Okay, so now that we've covered some of the ones that we can't find and mm -hmm. why it's hard to find them in mm -hmm. first place, mm -hmm. maybe we can talk about now focus on what people are using on a daily basis. So our youth nowadays, mm -hmm. what do they tend to run for when it comes to contraceptives? When okay. we're talking about youth, because this is a youth-based yeah. channel, yeah. we're talking about um, teenagers or mm -hmm. people who have um, uh, are just above the age of puberty, adolescents, yes. just yes. above the age of adolescents. What do they tend to run to? As an expert, mm -hmm. what do you see them tending to run to when it comes to a contraceptive? Okay, so what they will usually run to, uh, we classify them into two types. We classify them into temporary and long-term. So usually the youth will uh, go for the temporary ones. And the temporary okay. ones, I'm talking about condoms. Yes. I'm talking about uh, the oral contraceptive pill. Yes. I'm talking about the plan B, what, what is called the Postino 2. Uh, uh, P2. P2, okay. yes, the P2. That's what they usually run to, and um, then the long-term ones, okay? okay? So the long-term ones are usually um, the ones that you put um, the IUCDs, you put them through the uterus, and it's put through, um, it's put by a medical professional, either a nurse who is trained or a doctor who is trained, or the ones that usually uh, go through the hand. It's called um, Implanon or Jadel. I'm sure you've heard these yes, names. Yes. yes. So usually why uh, the youth will go for the temporary ones mm. is because they don't need someone to help them to put it you see like for ah, example they can do it themselves they can do it themselves they can just go and you don't even need currently you don't need a you don't need a prescription so you just you just go and talk to um, your pharmacist or whoever and say that I need this I need a condom so you just buy you understand uh, and then second they're not in the um, they're not doing it for family planning most of these people who are just maybe just out of po uh, just out of puberty or they're just young they're not yet in family a family setup you understand yes. so the long term the long term the uh, the Jadel the IUCDs usually it's someone who's had a baby or two maybe in a family relationship they're they're married and they want to plan their baby they want I want five years to rest and then I get another baby mm -hmm. so in in that way that's when they will use the long-term ones mm -hmm. so because um, the youth are just 
um, their breakthrough in, in the sexual health. So they they're just starting to have sex. Um, also, they are not planned. You understand? So yes, that's why yes. they will take the temporary ones. So they'll take the condoms. They'll take the pills, the P2. They'll take the spermicide, something that they can use. No one can tell them. You know, something that yeah. they can easily access. Yes, yeah. they can mm. buy it themselves. Yes, they can use it themselves Self. without asking anyone for assistance. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah. So discretion is mm -hmm. the key. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Discretion. Yes. Yeah. Discretion uh, is something very, and it, I think it, it it scares quite a number of people. You know. Yeah. And which is my next question, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, because I do feel like our youth may run to these temporary measures as uh, exactly for that discretion. Mm -hmm. And now let's touch a little bit about discretion when it comes to con uh, con contraceptives because <laughs> this is something that I think even people are ashamed to buy in the shops. Is that You're going to choose true. the dingiest place to find this that is very where true. nobody knows you. That is very and, true. And wait until the line is like finished. Mm -hmm. As in, people go through lengths mm -hmm. to get these things. Yes. And then, Kunali to Ajali, like, hey, <laughs> Tuskies, like, shika, up, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And so, I just want to talk a little bit about the discretion mm -hmm. and when it comes to you specifically. When they do tend to choose these temporary methods and they want to be discreet about it, is it because they're trying to be discreet because they feel that um, if they share that, hey, I'm having intercourse or I'm having sex, they might get some judgment or mm -hmm. is it because they feel like if they share or to their friends or to their parents that hey mm -hmm. um you know i'm using a contraceptive of this kind and of this kind because i don't want to get hiv or aids they don't want to get some kind of judgment is mm -hmm. that the reason why they might be wanting some kind of discretion because i couldn't think of another reason why but i could be wrong yeah i think you are so right you are so right about that the first thing um, that really affects the youth currently is that shame and it's it, I, I feel like it's a shame that is carried all the way from our home setup yeah I feel like it's a shame that is carried all our all the way even amongst from the school setup from wherever yes that um, first of all we are taught to approach sex as something of shame rather than mm -hmm. something that is a normal uh, human function right. yes right. that actually the World Health Organization insists that reproductive health and sexual health should be safe should be accessible 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 yeah. and should include freedom of choice mm -hmm. do you understand yes but if you are approaching sex as something to be ashamed of and usually this is seen so many times even in universities the first mm. thing that someone will do there'll be someone who is selling p2 from his suitcase and you will prefer to go and buy the p2 from mm. someone who is selling from a suitcase mm. than walk to a pharmacy and buy you understand yes. because maybe you are afraid that if I go to the pharmacy someone will see me yes not only will someone see me yes. um, they will judge me what a neona mm -hmm. like why did you have sex without hey, a condom what, uh, what, with now a you condom. come to buy P2 yes. and now now it's even more scary even condoms are something of shame you're even afraid to buy the condom so usually they will either buy from illegal sources or they will prefer right. not to have not to have not to even use the condom so they, they go with the coitus yes, they just method. Go, exactly or and how many people who are young can actually have the coitus in no wonder the coitus interruptus method is one of them that has the highest well, amongst the highest failure rates yeah. because how many people have that self-control not very many yeah. it's something that comes with age it's something that comes with experience yes. maybe this is a young boy or 15 years old yes. who is the first this is the first time yeah um, the first time they're doing it, they might not have that control, mm. and that is the truth. Yes. That's so the truth. really, at the end of the day, is that you will see these young girls, these young boys, who are afraid to even access, access to even walk mm. and say, "I want it." To even say, so no wonder. Um, again, I say that I applaud the government by uh, trying to even put those um, condom um, condom dispensers in in schools yes, yes, in public course. places so mm. that someone can just take no one can know that you're taking but someone can take even if it's in a loo mm. you know mm. i think it's something good but it's it's not common and people are ashamed of it and it's a, it's a shame that is carried all the way from home 
from our friends that we don't want to talk about it yeah. we don't want to talk about that our health it has to be safe yes accessible mm -hmm. and with freedom exactly yes and we're going to come back a little bit about um talking about these substance uh, this sorry these things that are sold from the suitcases these mm. contraceptives yeah. but before we do that i also wanted to kind of tie in the, the whole topic of shame mm -hmm. with the fact that it be begins at home mm -hmm. um with the question of is it because our parents maybe mm -hmm. don't do that awkward awkward mm -hmm. S let's sit down like mm -hmm. no we're going to sit down for about an hour we're mm -hmm. going to talk about this yes. this is not something we're going to talk about for 10 seconds just in passing mm -hmm. no we're mm -hmm. sitting we're talking about this for a very long time mm -hmm. and we're going to do it for repeatedly until mm -hmm. it gets in here yeah so is it maybe an issue that parents are not doing that properly because nile shame as well coming mm -hmm. from the parents yeah. then again you have to remember they've been brought up in a different generation true, true, this very is stuff true. you don't discuss in mm. the generation where our parents have come from yeah and so for them it's zileza oh my god sometimes yeah happy. yeah but also at the same time they also have the knowledge and you know since things have been narratives have been pushed along and advocates have been pushing along um narratives that hey mm -hmm. as a parent this is something you must do mm -hmm. so at the end of the day they do that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, just when you're going to boarding mm -hmm. like uh, so uh, nani, uh, in the car even mm -hmm. or just at the bus stop like when you're holding your things about to climb up yeah and they do that kind of thing for you i don't it's funny to be a buyer or yeah. something and <laughs> yeah. it's like what is to be a buyer yeah and why shouldn't i do it mm -hmm. and why can't i do it and still be safe yeah, Nona. And so this kid goes with a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Goes to school. Yeah. Can't talk about it in school once yeah. again because now he's filled with a whole bunch of kids whose parents don't tell anything to anyone. So they're filling each other with ideas. Yeah, yeah, that's a ideas like sex is this, sex is this. Mm -hmm. So it builds up a whole idea for them that is not necessarily true yeah then comes university mm -hmm. and then they're ready to try it out maybe some have tried it even in high school some yeah. even in primary yes that's true it's so true. comes university they don't want to get the condom in open like you said mm -hmm. yeah and so do you think that yes it does start at home and once you do answer that question we'll divert completely and come back to what we we're discussing before about um getting things from the suitcases okay all right, so um, the first thing that I would say, um, it does start from home. I, I would say that it does start from home. And I would say that as much as parents are bringing us up, they're also bringing us up mentally. Yeah, And it's very hard to break through a mental, if, you, if, if you're making, um, what, how can I call it? call it a safe house so, yeah. sort of because that's what our parents are there for to create a safe house for us yeah. and it's not just giving you shelter it's not just giving you food it's also also building your mind yes and I think building the mind is one of the most important things mm. but parents are afraid of it mm. not only parents guardians are because they feel like if I talk about it mm -hmm. then I'm encouraging it <laughs> Right. You understand true. that I'm encouraging it. If I talk to you about sex, because I know that there are so many uh, families where even the word sex cannot be to uh, spoken about. Again, these um, parents who grew up in an age where they didn't ever even see their parents uh, engage in any physical activity, not even like a handshake. It was yes. Baba Nani, Baba Nani from afar. Baka you know? Said, that yes. Those are the names. Baba Nani, and, uh, and that is your wife. Yes. You know? So yes. even like any physical contact. So you can tell that barrier. That barrier is already there. It's still there. It's still there. But. The truth is that this discussion has to be done. And the reason why it's that parents are building, create a mental safe house for your child. Mm -hmm. Let them know, let them be armed with, um, with knowledge and with the ability to make decisions. Because- yes. uh, Please repeat that. Yes. <laughs> let them be armed with we, knowledge and the, the ability, ability to, to make, make decisions. decisions very important yes not and making decisions for them it's yes. giving them knowledge yes. and letting them choose wisely what, yes and once and be, believe just like the the way it's written in the bible uh, bring up a child in the way he should go and 
they will follow up uh, follow it up even uh, in adulthood That's that true. remains the truth even if they depart they even come they back. depart they, they will come, come back, back yeah, because they know true. they know and that is the thing if you if you tell them first of all i i also, i even have a problem with the use of the, of as, uh, of the word tabiambaya in regards to sex because it already gives a negative connotation to yeah, sex bad manners yes that it's bad manners and the truth is that it's not it is just a human function yeah it's actually a gift from God. It is a gift from God. It yeah. is a gift Within from the God. Of but the truth is that if you, if every, even every gift from God, if not used in the right way, if not used with knowledge, becomes a curse. <laughs> that mm, is the truth. That is so true. That is the truth. You can be, you can have so many gifts from God, but if you don't use it the right way, yes. and that's the same way with sex. It's so true. Now the thing is that teenage pregnancies are are on a rise. Uh, in Kenya, um, sexual violence is also a problem in Kenya, and that is why you have to be able to create that mental safe house as a parent. Tell them, tell them what sex is. Tell them the right age to have sex, that an age of uh, understanding, mental understanding. Tell them the um, the consequences of sex, the benefits of sex. Talk to them. Yes and then tell them what are their options. If you're not capable of doing it yourself, um, get a reproductive health professional. Take yes. them to a clinic. Yeah. Let someone else talk to them. Get a nurse to talk, because that is their or job. Or a trusted friend of theirs. Or a trusted friend. Get mm. someone to counsel them. Have someone who knows what they're talking about teach them. Let it not be that they're learning, as you have said, from each other. People who don't know what they're talking about are the ones feeding each other. <laughs> so that's the sad yeah, part. Become something that's else. the sad part. And mm -hmm. you don't want you don't want even uh, kids to be to to have fear in their mind. Because yes. once you have fear in your mind, you do those things. You mm -hmm. do things that you behave like you're ashamed. You behave like you're ashamed to go and get those condoms. You have that fear. But mm -hmm. once you know um, about yourself, about what sex is in your life, then you can make good decisions. And I think parents are so key, they are a key in creating a safe house, a mental safe house of knowledge for their children. Okay, yeah. that's very true. And then, um, you know, before we actually, I don't know if our producers can bring up the one question that we had posted to our people. We want to know uh, when you people were talked to about sex and how that conversation went with your parents. Was it an awkward thing or was it a comfortable thing? And did it even happen at all? Mm -hmm. Or in Bakasai, your conversation just didn't happen, no, no. Uh, so we just want that little feedback from you guys. Um, feel free, feel comfortable. Once again, this discussion is not here so we can encourage young people to have sex. No, not at all, we're not doing that. We're here to disseminate knowledge about sex and contraceptives. Once again, so that people can have the ability to make wise decisions on their own. And um, maybe we can move on to discuss the effects now. Mm -hmm. Because we've talked about the fact that there's a stigma around it, this kind of taboo in our society, in our homes, and our people have reached a point where they're getting P2 from the suitcases. Mm -hmm. Now they get the P2 from the suitcase. What happens within their body at that stage? Is there an effect that these things happen? And mm -hmm. what makes it fake? What makes them fail? Mm -hmm. Because if it's coming from a suitcase, mm -hmm. even the condoms, mm -hmm. most of the time, um, it's not legit. Yeah. Actually, no, most of it, I think 100% of it. It's not a legit product. Mm -hmm. It's going to fail them. Yeah. And some of them are not aware of mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And so it's just kind of wondering what are the effects that may hit these people when they use such things? Mm -hmm. And let's say one or two, you know, yeah. and someone maybe has low sperm count or a girl simply can't get pregnant mm -hmm. and she keeps using this pitu, she thinks it's working mm -hmm. and it's not working. She doesn't know she simply is maybe infertile mm -hmm. and then it creates some kind of problem in the uterus because mm -hmm. it has chemicals it should not be having. Mm -hmm. What do you know about this doc? Okay what I can say, um, le let me start with P2 because um, it's quite common. Apparently one of the most counterfeited drugs in Kenya and in Africa is actually P2. Um, and the reason is because it's so easily, uh, everyone wants it and everyone wants it and everyone wants to buy it from whatever corner. Um, this is a public health issue <laughs> that actually people who are selling such fake drugs should be in jail 
it should it, it should you should be in jail you should be fined for it but the first thing that needs to be done is people need to protect themselves um, against it and understand yes you understand by knowing what true P2 looks like or true plan B or whatever you call it, plan B, morning after pill, that it needs to be um, taken from legal sources. Legal sources means a government health facility, uh, uh, maybe a mm. private health facility, mm. a pharmacy that actually has um, a certificate mm. that it's supposed because to not be selling. all chemists and pharmacies, yes. some of them uh, are also fishy. Yeah, very. And then you called it dingy places. You, you, you go there and you're like, how am I buying a drug that's supposed to be sold at 150 to 200 for 25 bob or for 50 bob? Yeah, because they're sold for yeah. that. But in your head, you're not thinking that. You're just like, no, you're just happy. Deal. You're just like, yes, yeah. I have a bargain. Yes. I got a bargain. Yeah. yeah? And usually now the, the, the thing with these counterfeited drugs, there are two things. They could be placebos. Like completely, there is nothing inside that drug. It's just a white pill, you know? It's yeah. just a white pill that has nothing. So usually what happens with such is that um, um, if you, you can easily get pregnant, of course, because it doesn't have the desired contraceptive effect, um, usually that is, those are the safe ones. They're the good ones if you just have a placebo drug, the one that has nothing inside it. Um, the ones that are dangerous mm. are the ones where they are selling drugs that has another ingredient. Yeah, for example, you could be sold for um, um, an anti-diabetes medi uh, diabetic medication as the P2. They just take any drug, but you see oh those drugs now are dangerous because, yes. like for example, a drug like that. What? Yes, a drug like that can lower your sugars and you can end up fainting you can end up so you'd actually rather have even the white pill that has nothing the placebo. rather than the other drugs mm. they would they can just get any drug that looks th the size of the p2 and then they give it to you and tell you that this is p2 or tell you that this is the money uh, that this is the daily pill yeah so like actually the truth is that there are so many counterfeited drugs in the market and it is a public health concern because you don't know what it can do to this person either it can result in pregnancy or it can result in other side effects depending on the drug they are giving you because they can be giving you anything yes 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 so the first thing that needs to be done is you need to know that every um, currently you need to look at the date of manufacture mm -hmm. uh, the date of manufacture mm -hmm. the date of expiry right. the active ingredients even google it just google just okay. ask p2 what should it have inside oh, and look and at it and it will come up with and it you match it and you can match it up box. with what is looking what what you're seeing on the box and then um is it is it closed is it something that's closed do you uh, does it look like it's something that has been tampered with uh look at the manufacturer as well and then at the bottom there's usually a logo to scratch off and it's also written original the fake one usually when you scratch it off there's nothing there's nothing written there's like a white part for scratching yeah but then there's nothing there's nothing written yes underneath. yes yes oh. so you, so you purchase and then you you, know, you, you scratch it and you and see whether it's written original right you need to always uh, approach these things with with knowledge and wisdom first go to a legal source okay even if you want a place that's cheap I'd rather you go to a government health facility or a government pharmacy yeah. or um, all these private pharmacies as well. It usually goes for around 150 to 200 bob or even condoms, whichever. Condoms sometimes are free or, or they're the ones that are sold for cheap. Buy those ones and then look at it. Look at, examine it and see. Mm -hmm. And if you do know someone mm -hmm. who is actually selling these things that are fake, whatever mm -hmm. fake drugs, mm -hmm. you should actually just report to the uh, chief's office. There's a public health officer who should actually come and take take those drugs. And so the measures that have been put in just yes, in, in yes, place to just cater, in case. Just in case of this. But this, you see, yeah. people don't know about them. So yeah. they even fear. Yeah. Just so going. they buy this and they just go on their way and yeah. mm. oops, I'm pregnant. Yeah. Or, yes, oops, I'm pregnant or I'm just having funny side effects. I'm, I've been fainting. Mm. I'm uh, bleeding excessively because you've been given a, a, another drug I or see. a fake drug. I yeah. See. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. So it, it's, a, it's a whole problem and it's a public health concern mm -hmm. because sometimes even, um, anyway, yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounded like you're I going to say something quite important. No, 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 no. I'm just... Um, yeah, to me, it's a heartbreaking issue because uh, some uh, people take advantage of people who don't know mm. and um, people who don't know what to do, what to use, uh, how it should look like. Right, yeah. so taking advantage of, um, the of our one yeah. who doesn't know yeah. and it's a bit too naive and yes. innocent. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, um, it's a pretty sad situation. Yeah. And like you said, and I think the only way we can curb this is once again, everything starts at home yeah i don't think there's something that everything starts at home so whatever you're doing as a parent or whatever it is even as a child if you're kind of having a free relationship with your parent or a comfortable relationship you can or if you don't the internet is there thank god for google mm -hmm. but then we still think that this is a sit down kind of conversation because you need a back and forth back and forth interaction when, when trying to understand contraceptives and sex it's not just something you google and understand you need to ask some questions you need to be given proper information and you need to do that with an expert and first and foremost um do stay safe when mm -hmm. when um in any sexual interaction at all once again we're not encouraging it but in the event that this does happen do have safe measures put in place so that you don't have any mishaps any mistakes that you're going to look back on you're young you have a long wonderful life to live so think twice before you make any mistakes Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been a wonderful talk on sex and contraceptives with the wonderful Dr. Wanjohi, very abled and wonderfully versed on this topic. Coming up next is Barry with politics, youth and politics, and this has been Why in the Morning. My name is Jeremy Chache. Santemi Sana. Mm -hmm.